Hi everybody, my name is Stephanie and welcome to my YouTube channel, Sugar High Score. It is almost Valentine's Day, as you probably already know, so I wanted to make a cute cake to go along with the holiday. Over on Facebook, I keep seeing these cute teddy bear cakes with a floating tear. So I thought they were really beautiful, so I wanted to create my own version of it. And this is what I have come up with. I think it turned out very adorable with all the teddy bears on it. So today I'm going to take you through all the steps in creating this cute teddy bear cake. All right, let's get right on into it. I'm going to begin as I usually do by building my structure. I'm using a 14 inch square MDF board for the base and I'm attaching square feet on the bottom. This cake does require a threaded rod and I have a nut and washer on there and I push the threaded rod up through the bottom of the board. Okay, and then you'll need another washer and nut on the other side. Be sure to get this super tight using pliers or uh, wrenches. Once I've got it nice and tight, I'm covering the base with aluminum foil tape. I like covering the board in tape because I can easily clean it off. But what I should have done was cover it in fondant at this point, but I wasn't thinking ahead, but it's okay. I am also covering the threaded rod in tape too, and I'm showing you that I'm going up about seven inches. Actually, I did end up going a little bit higher than that later on. This board is for my eight inch bottom tier. I'm cutting a hole in the board so I can run it down the threaded rod later. I had originally planned to make this cake kind of wonky and off center, which is why the hole is not centered, but later I changed my mind. So go ahead and make a hole in your board in the center. Next, I'm going to level my cake by running my knife along the top edge while turning my turntable at the same time. And I do the same right through the middle of the cake too, which is something we call torting. This cake recipe is one I've used for many years. It is so rich and chocolatey, but it is not good for carving. So if you want to carve a cake into the shape of a dog or an animal or whatever it is, you should not use this cake recipe. I only use this one for tiered cakes. And I'm piping a buttercream dam around the edge of my cake and I'm filling it with fudge filling. I will put these recipes down in the description box if you are interested in trying it. I'm filling the center layer with chocolate Swiss meringue and the last layer of filling is another layer of fudge. This is one of those cakes that I take like two bites of and then I come back later and take another two bites. If you eat it like that, the calories actually do not count. Next, I'm completely covering my cake in chocolate Swiss meringue buttercream all along the top and on the sides. Just look at that, it looks so good close up like this. Using my offset spatula, I'm covering the sides and once I have it fully covered, I'm using a bench scraper to smooth it out. To get that sharp edge on the top, I'm using my bench scraper to graze right across that top edge, pushing the buttercream in towards the center of the cake. I do this all around the top edge and once I've roughly smoothed it out, I pop it into the refrigerator until the buttercream has hardened and I repeat the same process. I also go around it a few times with a hot spatula. All right, what I have here are my boards for my top tier. This one is a six inch round piece of MDF and this one is a four inch. I drilled a hole in my four inch that is the same size as my threaded rod and my six inch has a larger hole in the center which is large enough so that the nut can fit inside of it. Just like that. I'm also going to cover my six inch board in foil tape. You could also use cake foil if you prefer that too. Next, I'm layering up my six inch cake on top of the six inch board I just covered in foil tape. And I smooth that out just like I did previously with my eight inch. Once they are both smooth, I pop them into the refrigerator to chill. On to the fondant. I've dusted my countertop with cornstarch and I'm rolling my fondant out with my wheel tin rolling pin. I'm draping the fondant over my rolling pin and I unroll it onto my cake. To get this nice and smooth, I first lift up the ends of the fondant so I can push out any air that is trapped under the fondant on the top of the cake. Then I run my hands around the top edge to make sure it's nice and sharp, and then I begin opening up the pleats and smoothing it out with the palm of my hand. I'm turning my turntable and working my way to the bottom of the cake. 
If there are any air bubbles trapped under the fondant, be sure to get those out with a pin. And then I'm smoothing it out with my fondant smoothers and cutting away that excess fondant. And I repeat this entire process for my six inch cake. Okay, let's put this cake together. I've got my structure back out and I'm covering the rest of my threaded rod in plastic wrap so the cake does not touch it. And then very, very carefully and slowly, I push my large cake down the threaded rod. My cake is cold when I'm doing this, so it's a little bit easier to handle. And also I'm putting my fingers right where I know the rod is going to come through so I can keep it from tearing too much. Okay, that looks pretty good, so now I just need to clean it up just a little bit. I'm getting rid of the plastic wrap and then I'm covering my larger cake with a piece of wax paper to keep it clean while I'm working on the top tier. Next I'm adding another nut and washer. And now I'm putting on the four inch board and then goes on another washer and nut and I'm tightening those up just as tight as I can. And now that it's all tightened, I'm covering all the parts that may come in contact with the cake, um, which is the threaded rod and also a little bit of the board. Before I put my next cake on, I am spooning some melted candy melts onto the board. This will act as a glue so my cake will stay put. And before that has a chance to harden, I lower my next cake down into place. Okay, on to the decorations. First, I'm brushing some piping gel around the base of the cake, and I'm attaching a cute Valentine's Day ribbon. I made it hang down just a little bit from the cake so it could hide that four inch board. You could also make this ribbon out of fondant if you prefer that. I just like this way because it's so much easier. I'm keeping it simple with the rest of the decorations by adding some red hearts and some circle sprinkles. And this is when I realized that I forgot to cover my board. So for this part, I'm rolling out some fondant with Tylos mixed into it and I'm attaching it to my board with piping gel. I had to do this in panels, but I did get them on there nice and neat. To help cover the seams, I pressed a cute impression mat into the fondant. It had little stars on it, which was so pretty. It's hard to see on the video, but I also brushed some shimmery pearl dust on it, which made it really cute and sparkly. Up next is my cute and adorable teddy bear topper. I made this completely out of fondant with Tylos mixed into it. And this pearl part is pretty self-explanatory. It just takes practice to get good at these. So I'm just gonna let you guys watch how I made this. Oh, look at that, isn't it so cute? It wasn't too hard to make either. I'm going to go ahead and put it on my cake along with a cute Valentine's Day lollipop. And I'm going to finish her off by creating some arms and I'm attaching those with one of them holding on to the lollipop. I ended up making three teddy bears. Let me show them all to you. This guy is holding a chocolate heart and then my middle teddy bear looks like she is holding up the entire top tier. I kind of wrapped her body around the threaded rod, but you can still see it slightly. You could also make another bear on the other side to hide it, but I didn't really care to do that. And then here's my cute teddy on the top. 
And finally, I am covering my board with a red ribbon. And since I had a bunch of heart candy sprinkles left over, I decided to cover the tops of my cakes with them. Here it is, all finished, my adorable Valentine's Day teddy bear cake. Thank you all for watching and I hope that you have learned how to make your own teddy bear Valentine's Day cake. I think this one turned out so cute. I really love the little teddy bear in the middle, how he's holding up the top tier. This one in person is really spectacular. I feel like you can't really see how cute it is on the camera. I think it would be a really great centerpiece at a Valentine's Day party. All right, if you guys are on social media, please go check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you all for being here, and I will see you later. Bye.